So this was a build around submission for red white magecraft. So there's two playable white magecraft cards here in Clever Lumamancer and Leonin, Leonin Lightscribe here. But then past just both of these, we also have Smoldering Egg as a payoff for casting instants and sorcery spells. And then we have Moonvale Region as a card that rewards us for kind of chaining through and casting, casting a bunch of spells. Now, Smoldering Egg actually has a lot of cards that work very well with it in Red White. Sacred Fire, Angel Fire Ignition, and Electric Revelation are all cards that allow you to have a single card flip Smoldering Egg, and they're all double spells to trigger our Magecraft things twice, which is great. Someone asked about Showdown of the Scalds. This is like Showdown of the Scalds, but it kills your opponent. Generates a ton of card advantage and beats down at the same time while providing a threat. So I think this card, this card tends to be a better piece of card advantage, and that is that is why. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this and see if we're able to put together aggressive starts to run people down or not. Holy crap, chat. Is that an untapped snarl? Is this legal? Am I am I gonna get in trouble for playing a snarl untapped on two? I can't trip this at end of turn. Against double black mana here, I think casting angel fire ignition is a little bit ambitious. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and electric revelation here. Honestly, probably just discarding this. The learn package could be good. That was that was something I I looked at as a potential consideration. <clears throat> so there's still two turns off of blood on the snow. So I think I jammed the second light scribe here. How does post rotation standard feel power level wise? Uh, I don't really, I don't really know how to answer that question, I guess. All right, so pressure points pretty bad. Revitalize isn't great. All these redains sound lovely. I think we'd charm a couple of angel fire ignitions. So they're likely out of spot and we'll bring a couple curse of silence to name blood on the snow. They're almost, almost assuredly a blood on the snow deck, right? Yeah, the, for, the format hasn't settled yet. I don't really know. We don't really know exactly what's good and what's not yet. We're still, still figuring it out. I 
I tried, Jelly Bean. Hey, drop me, drop me a DM, Twin. I'll get that set up for you. On, drop me a DM on Discord. Uh, how much democracy to get into today? Uh, hold on one second. Let me check. Uh, I actually have both this and the deck after it were $100, $100 tips, so no, no cuts today. He's a defender, which is a little sad. Would today be a good day to unsuspend? It is historic, see you in 10. <laughs> God bless. Big fat nothing. It's exciting. I know people are joking about like, you know, obviously they should never ban on, they should never unban Brainstorm, but no joke, I think there's a real chance that Brainstorm could be unbanned in Historic. The fact that memory lapse is still weak legal obviously shows that the people making decisions in Historic have a huge bias towards blue cards. So I don't, I don't actually think it's outside the realm of possibility that uh, Brainstorm gets unbanned. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Three Smith. And the the way the way the brainstorm unban article was written, like, says that to me. Back and wondering where the werewolves are. I think I missed that one dumping truck. Uh, we've had so many deck submissions, and there's so many different things to poke at in standard that I have not had a chance to revisit any of the first decks that we've played yet. Yes, that is correct, Winding Road. So all of the flashback cards in this deck that we are playing flip Smoldering Egg completely on their own. So you play like a three and then a four or a two and then a six and you flip it over. It's really good. So both both of our three mana spells flip Egg on curve. You play Egg on two, three on three, four on four, flip it attack. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot we're playing the one mana flashback spell. Good call. Yeah, let's keep it. It does duck too little. Yeah, still, uh, when a card transforms, unless it leaves the battlefield and re-enters, it's still the same instance of that card.
It's a shame we don't have, if we had a second white, I'd like clever into homestead courage, but I think we just kill their wolf without a second white. I don't feel so clever when my Lumi Mancer doesn't have a stat line yet. Is Chariot good with haste chat? Does anybody know? Can you let me know in chat if we think Chariot's good with haste? Thanks for the follow, folks. Yikes. Bone's got a black splash. Hey, thanks for the 55 months, Jin. Welcome back. Super dead. I don't know if I want all the redeems here, but I definitely want some of them. From the Homestead Courage. So like probably some of these too. Sunset Revelry seems kind of okay here. I guess this is good once this is flipped over though. I'll leave a couple of these and I'm gonna trim these since we're boarding up Redeen in terms of threat density. Thanks for the five months, Einstein. Ah, there's that that tapped fury calm snarl that we know and hate. I was I was a little dazed and confused when it came into play untapped in the first match of the day. This, this feels this feels more normal and natural. Hey, play an X2 for me. Oh, Ermagerd, chat. Ermagerd, it's an untapped snarl. Twice in the same set of matches? Is that is this legal? Am I gonna get in trouble for showing this on Twitch? I love you, Snarl! I take back some of the terrible things I said about you. Only, only some of them though. You deserve most of them. You know, maybe I'm supposed to sequence these the other way and then discard my hand to the pressure point. Is this better than a random? Maybe.
Burning Hands is so awkward against these dragons. I guess we egg. And then we block plus Burning Hands with the Redeem. And the Sacred Fire will flip both eggs. No, I'm not doing Brawl every day, Dauber, because it hasn't been very popular. The last couple of Brawl videos did very poorly. So we're still gonna do maybe maybe one to three a week, but not every day. I don't think I wanna. I get to dome me for two here. I can't even attack with both of these because I'm dead on board because of the layer hydra. Uh, when I say brawl, I'm referring to historic brawl. A, a cantrip. If they don't have a removal spell, drawing a spell is lethal here, right? There's evidence in our sorcery, please. The Magic the Gathering experience, Jet. The Magic the Gathering experience. And the best part about, and by best I mean worst, is we even won this turn if we would have just had a Den of the Bugbear in our lands there. But not only did we flood, but we managed to flood without drawing any of our four creature lands. Yeah, definitely Duck Doolittle. New standards overperforming by a lot. I'll be interested to see what things look like, you know, two weeks from now. Standard, like, I've been, I'll post two or three standard videos in a day, and every standard video will do better than the one historic video and one brawl video I post, so. Part of it, part of it is definitely that standard just rotated, and this is the, this is probably the peak standard we'll be at for the next year. Is a very real possibility. I don't know that I expect standard to get bad, but I also, um, people are just more interested in things when they're shiny and new. I can't, I can't say that I blame them. Uh, it's definitely been true that Magic's better standard formats in the last little bit have been the smaller standard formats. Thanks for the follow, Spartan. Good morning. Oh my god, I played the wrong side of my land. For fuck's sake. It's a pretty big misclick. If I had played red there, I was gonna sacred fire the sentinel as well, keep them off of ramp next turn. Now they can play a six mana spell if they have it, or a five mana spell without a land. Just a brutal Cathar. Okay. Our mistake could end up being a benefit, honestly. If they, uh... 
if they don't have anything to ramp into, I'm kind of happy having the extra Sacred Fire. Hey, Ramos. Thanks for the quarter of a year. Welcome back. Happy Friday. Welcome to the weekend. Mm, holding priority in between cycling the sacred fires doesn't really accomplish anything, right? So they have a deal three. Like a dragon fire or the deal three slash rummage. We just chill. I actually clicked the wrong mode of burn down the house and draft yesterday and wiped my entire board. Yep, every time I cast Crux of Fate, I'm like immensely paranoid that that's gonna happen. So, with this, I'm going to kill their Sentinel before blocks, which means if they don't have a red source, my 4-4 can block their first striker here. So their mana pool is going to empty when we move to blockers, so they have to make a decision now. Hmm, read that dragon fire like a book last turn, chat. Okay, so now I think we... Sacred fire the den of the bugbear, which triggers magecraft on this. We'll take action this time, and then we'll go ahead and block this into here. Egg back. All right, and now flashback on Sacred Fire flips the smoldering egg next turn. Yeah, our, our deck kind of has two primary axes of attack, right? We have like, sometimes we're going to have cheap aggressive draws with these, and other times we're going to be able to go bigger and longer with these. And like the flashback spells kind of work nicely with both halves of the deck. Definitely want a giant grip of burning hands here. But I also want Skyclave Apparition. I think I just want to pull up against these slightly bigger decks. Cut the Lumance. I think we leave Light Scribe. I think that's fine. We'll leave a pressure point in. Yeah, that game, that game like the quality of play difference between that game and the aggro mirrors we played earlier in Historic is just kind of night and day. Like, the number of de sequencing decisions I had that game where choosing not to play my cards or which order I sequence my cards in was huge, right? 
We weren't- I wasn't just vomiting my hand out to vomit my hand out. There's the- THERE'S THE SNARLS I KNOW AND HATE! Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and... Burning Hands the Sentinel now, because they're missing a land drops. Hey, thanks for the four months, Spicy Dinosaur. Welcome, welcome back. We don't- is it possible we don't deserve good standard and good historic at the same time? Asking the real questions. Untap Snarl, chat. Untap Snarl! Alright, so... I think I'm supposed to interact with their board here because if they untap and play Cadillac, I just die, right? So we have to take the Stormseeker out of here. And then next turn we can Angel Fire plus Sacred Fire and like smash them for infinite with the Smoldering Egg flipped over. Seems, seems good. A little above average. I'm not blocking here because they could have Blizzard Brawl. So honestly, I think we're supposed to angel fire the Skyclave. So that way my threat my threats are kind of split up. Cause they have they they are Naya, so like they have Brutal Cathar, and if they brutal Cathar this, I don't want to be all in on this one, basically. This is worse against Dragonfire, Sedge. It's possible I should be playing more Electric Revelation too. It's possible just like the full four of both of these is correct. I have another Dragonfire? Yeah, perhaps playing around their white card when they didn't have white lands in play was wrong. Amaria's call, single flipping smoldering egg is also pretty good. Come on, tap out so I can I can angel fire without without being worried. Angel fire flashback is lethal. No, because you don't get the deal two trigger. Gaining, yeah, it's Angel Fire Ignition is a big swing when it gets in. Like, make my thing bigger permanently, life link, hammer your health total, like. And the broken wings. Close race. So if I draw untapped land, they die? Uh, 
Uh, this is also lethal. Sweet. That was gas. We also we also got to double shock them, top deck master. I mean, like we drew two extra cards, right? And like untapped lands were lethal there too. So we had a lot of lot of lethal draws. I thought we were gonna draw a snarl. That, yeah, that's about how so how the rest of it would go. It's gonna add dark loose. Thanks for the follow. And just Rhino and Paper Butter a few minutes ago. If you're still here, welcome to the channel. Welcome everybody for hanging out. Great to see over 1,400 people in here for some magic this morning. If you're new to the channel, like Dark Loose and the others, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream full time here on Twitch. I'm usually here doing magic five days a week to start my stream. We do all constructed magic, standard, historic, as well as some historic brawl are primarily what we play. Otherwise, a lot of variety in the stream each and every single day. Usually we change decks every uh, 60 to 90 minutes. So we do between two and four decks every single day. If you enjoy that, be sure to check out my YouTube channel as well. Everything I stream that feels relatively competitive or interesting or maybe worth iterating on some more ends up there cut up in its own deck videos. Hey, Mendy, thank you for the sub gifts. That's very generous of you. Takes the sting out of mulliganing to five a little bit. Appreciate it. Lord Bong, Lothred and Kyle, Kyle the Decent Lawyer. Welcome back, Kyle. <clears throat> It's always good to see new people floating back, or returning people floating back into magic. CC and Mr. Cube the Dude. I have to say, the while the Hoaglandia Open went really well last weekend, the one thing that was kinda sad about it was we gained so many followers so quickly during the Hoaglandia Open that I didn't get a screenshot of 69420 followers. But we did just hit 69, 669, so I'm gonna go ahead and call that, call that as a, a relative success. All right, well, Sacred Fire is not likely to kill, kill too many things against Blue Red, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it as a deal for here. Kitty cat, cube the dude in Vogue. Good morning. If we keep flooding, this might be a spell this game. Yeah, we had some front page juice for uh for the last open that made the viewer metrics pretty insane. We peaked, peaked just over 18,000 people and average 5,000 people for the eight and a half hour stream. Come on, foretell a card so I can attack you with none of the bugbear. Thanks, appreciate you. This card is really bad in this matchup because you have to discard the card when you cast it, not when it resolves, which means against a deck full of counter spells, we likely get two for one when we cast this, which is unfortunate. This matchup seems pretty bad for us. Thanks for the follow, Repact. Yeah, it was fun. Jim and I, I, looking back on the coverage, um, after my computer blue screened during round three, we actually didn't have any downtime for the, the back four and a half hours of the tournament. The only, the only downtime was like the very minimal amounts of like waiting for players to start sharing their screens. We just went from match into match into match otherwise. I probably just concede when this gets countered. Did we take bathroom breaks? No, no, we just ran straight through. 
That's actually one of the reasons why I really like, um, why I really like working with other content creators for events like that. Because, like, other content creators, like Jim, who stream full-time, are, like, used to minimal food, minimal bathroom breaks for long streams, so we can just gun right through it. Because, like, Wizards, wizard streams, they have, like, real staff with, like, lots of commentators. No, I'm just an adult who can go four hours without peeing. Listen, listen, chat. I used to road trip across the country... For, you know, on a 14 hour drive to New Jersey from central Illinois, you didn't have a lot of time for bathroom breaks. So just, just like a real tournament. I think pressure points probably actually okay in this matchup for tempoing them a little bit. This matchup seems bad for us in general. They have counter spells a lot, cheap removal. I think we bring in this to name their Goldspan Dragons. No, listen, chat. When I worked for Corporate America, I took my hourly bathroom break. In a, in a former life, when I worked for uh, a Fortune 50 company, they gave me, I did a lot of uh, reporting, uh, gener generating reports using Excel and stuff like that on different metrics that they had. And the people that, the person that had the job before me wasn't super proficient with technology. So I ended up automating most of the, most of the reports that they gave me. And by the, by the time I left there after a year and a half, I was doing two different people's work in less than two hours a day. So I spent a lot of time, you know, writing magic articles and doing stuff on the clock. <laughs> I remember it was like my last day after I put in my notice. They're like, geez, Jeff, we don't know how we're going to replace you. And it's like, I don't do anything all day, so you'll probably figure it out. My boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I poop on the company time. Exactly. I had that up at my desk at work and they made me take it down. Fucking capitalism, man. Don't even get to make poop jokes on the clock. <clears throat> So, them giving us a window here to put Angel Fire on the Moon Veil is actually a really big deal because all their removal is red based, right? If they don't have some kind of unsummon type effect here, this getting to 6-6 six, six will be a pretty, pretty big swing. Hey, new guardian, thanks for the new prime sub. I appreciate the support. All right, I think we actually do discard these here, right? Because they're both flashback cards and we get to draw two because this is a two color spell. Getting paid to post while pooping makes me a professional shit poster. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, look, the 6-6 six, six is good like I said it would be. <clears throat> good beats. I don't know if this deck is good, but it's certainly sweet. We have a ton of really great little synergies. I had to come give you my sub after you called me out in the Esper Control video yesterday. The Esper Control video yesterday does start with a little bit of a personal attack. I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not. <laughs>
Man, that's that's quite the comrade limerick there. Boss used to make a dollar while I made a dime, so I pooped on company time. Now boss makes ten while I make a cent, and the boss wonders why we can't pay rent. Soon the boss will make a grand while I live in a ditch, so then it's time to eat the rich. That's, that's a solid one right there. Can't say I've heard one that deep before, but it is quite excellent. Billy Pro Play, thanks for the follow, welcome to the channel. True, true poetry. Comrade ship posters, feel free to add that one to your copy pasta library. For people that are new to the channel, uh, I describe myself as aggressively progressive and if you are one of the unfortunate souls that uses Twitter and you happen across mine, you'll find a lot of uh, leftist retweets and takes on there. We talk about it occasionally on stream, even if it's not the focal point here, because I think politics are important, and I have three kids, and I want my country to be a place that uh, maybe they can grow up and live in that's decent. Thanks for the follow, Lunarine. Welcome, Lars. Uh-huh. <coughs> Our lack of extra white mana here is really rough. I, I guess I Moonveil Regent, but I, re I really wish I could do both of these. I might, I might be right to just do one of these, honestly. Thanks for the follow, Hades. Yeah, and this is, this is why perhaps Redeem was the right play last turn. Span dragon fire here, prob probably dead. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're just too far behind here at this point. We don't really have a catch up mechanic. Our deck's a little bit more of a mustard. We have a wide range of political views here from tax the rich and improve welfare for all to guillotine the rich and abolish the borders. It is true. We have a big, we have a big range. You relish my mustard pun. That's good. The dads, the dads out there will appreciate it. I'm a vegetarian, so I'm not big, too big on eat the rich myself. <clears throat> yeah, Essie and Sweet. Probably... I wish I knew, I think we bottom the pressure point in the dark, because if they're not a creature deck, revitalizes better. If we run off a couple of lands here, we get to go this into this into this, this twice and flip this over. I did not hear about that, Roth. That's a pretty, pretty yikes. I mean, I'll have to try that today and see if it's possible. Hold A while E speeding. Do extra damage. Okay, there's land number three.
Come on, four telecards so I can angel fire ignition. This is also fine. Nice, okay. So this has defender, so I can't do anything this turn, but next turn it's gonna attack for eight with lifelink. I think unsummon effects are playable in this format because of Renin 7, so we'll see. They could have double removal spell to kill this as well. Yes, the counters stay when you flip the card. Unless a transform card says exile it and return it to play, like 4 mana Nicol Bolas in Historic, the transform card is the same instance of that card. So this will be this will be an 8-8. So what you have to what you have to know, Alec, is that like when we make radically left memes on the channel, that's mostly making fun of the fact that like asking for people not to go bankrupt when they get sick, asking for women to have uh, control over their own bodies and having bod bodily autonomy, like those things are considered radical left views in the United States by by proponents of the right. So a lot of when I make radical left meme dot joke is uh. Yeah, that, that acknowledging that kind of shit. Like I said, it's not actually radical. It's just like, you know, things reasonable countries already have. Yeah, asking people to be vaccinated and wear a mask during a pandemic. Shit like that. Yeah, no blocks because of Dragonfire. I'm also at 28, right? So like, why do I care? Oh, they found Fading Hope. Vomit. Yeah, the, uh, the fact that uh, Renin7 is making Fading Hope a playable card is a little bit worse for Smoldering Egg, for sure. Oh, counter spells, chip. Counter spells. Alright, if they don't counter this, we can flip these this turn. The good news is, even if they do counter it, I still get the token, so then next turn Homestead Courage flips these over. But if they don't counter this and we draw an untapped white, Homestead Courage flips them this turn. Paco, thanks for the follow. Alright, so missed on that, but that's fine. We're still at 23, so we've got plenty of time to uh, take hits from the gold span. It's gonna come down to probably, you know, how many, uh... How many fading hopes of dragon fires do they have left over afterwards? It's for the tier two Hamblin. I appreciate the 27 months. Welcome back. Uh, I don't know what mascot interception does. I also think playing cards that only attack tokens is probably not very good. There's like some tokens, but not infinite. Like generally speaking, just like playing generic sweepers is probably better than cards that target specific tokens. Paco Marino, thanks for the follow. That's the part where they like cast three Aldrin's Epiphanies and we die. This is where the magic happens. <sighs> They're pausing. Maybe they don't have another epiphany.
Not gonna have time to flip a third one. So we played this, <sighs> we murder a bird, and then we're not, we're not dead on board. We get to attack them to six. Afternoon, Eternal Cartage and B-Dub. And the counter spell? We're thinking about counter spelling my homestead. I think we're thinking about counter spelling this. It does give me vigilance, so let me hit them to six while having a blocker. Yeah, okay. I don't think that's an unreasonable counter. I think I probably want to hold the second end of the bugbear for in case I draw another electric revelation. Where do they love to draw any of our flashback spells at this point? We'll let us get really far ahead really quickly. And this is a foretold card. It's probably a counter spell. All right, well now we'll hold the snarl instead of the den of the bugbear. They found a spell before we did. <clears throat> it's really unfortunate too, because like most of our lands are spells. Like we have Shatter Skull Smashings and stuff. Uh, arc are the uh, the white spell land would be a great draw too. Even this would have been a good a good draw last turn, right? Alright, well this this means I'm not. This means I'm not dead on board, at least. They have a, they have a field of rune to the person saying I can kill them this turn. Oh, if this is a counter spell in exile, we're still dead, huh? Uh, to the people still on the topics of politics in chat, I'd like to move along at this point, but remember there's always the Discord server. You are welcome and encouraged to talk about politics as much or as little as you'd want in the uh, specialty interest channel there. That's a close game, all things considered. Opponent just peeled out of having a spell a little bit before we did. <clears throat> Dean and Curse of Silence sound good here. <sighs> could we have used mana to animate the other bugbear land? We we could have, but then I didn't have lethal. So I didn't I didn't have enough mana. This is tapped because it's a snarl. Uh, so if I fired up the den of the bugbear, I was attacking for six only. So we were we were short either way. I would like to say, I would like to give a shout to wizards for naming the snarls and the pathways, snarls and pathways, because it's great not having to listen to the community bicker about what we're gonna call a particular land cycle. 
Watts, when Watts, he's just like, nah, I'm gonna, we're gonna put the name on the cards and you're not, nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna fight about it. Getting a Fading Hope before we've committed any counters to that seems like a huge win for us. Yeah, yeah, Triumphs have a name, a name too. So it's great. Put this on here, because this does give haste as well, so we get to crack in for four here. Also, again, this is the bigger threat than Lumamancer long term, so kind of diversifying our which uh, which ah. Uh, Threats are in our eggs are in our threat basket. I don't know if this card's broken, but it's certainly powerful. Oh my god, are they dead? Holy shit, is that a lethal homestead courage? Is it? I think it is. It's close. They're at one? Some good fucking clean living right there. I don't know if this deck is good, chat, but it's certainly great. Looks like you snagged a sub gifty slain. Welcome to chat. Yeah, they're dead to sacred fire even if they stabilize the board. Ash, Ash Mouth is certainly playable. This is this is one of the definitely one of the cards that's impressed me the most out of this new set. Very very potent, powerful card. I like the I like how this card like has some similarities to Thing in the Ice, but the fact that it cares about how much mana you paid makes it uh, functionally different. Like similar similar vibes but rewards you for doing different things. in the Grange. Thanks for the follows, Beard Bro and Lost Are You. I am. I'm also something of a Beard Bro myself. I don't know that Thing in the Ice and the Egg really work well together because Thing in the Ice encourages you to play a bunch of cheap spells, whereas Smoldering Egg encourages you to play bigger expensive spells. There's a little bit, little bit of tension there between what the cards want you to do in terms of making them a payoff. <clears throat> I think, I think Smoldering Egg's probably just too slow and fair for how fast and brutal Historic tends to be right now. Good chance they have a removal spell here, but I don't have anything else to do with my mana, so let's go. So they have no removal in hand, at least not instant speed, so that's great. So good chance they have spells that deal damage now. <sighs> That's brutal. Maybe they don't have a way to kill Moonvale and we get to run away with it. If they kill the dragon, we're gonna be kinda up a creek without a paddle. 
That doesn't do it. Hey, Nick Bob, thanks for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate the support. Dia Bunny, welcome back. Had to take a quick break from work to reset, mostly YouTube watcher, but thank you for the excellent content. Thanks for thanks for dropping off the prime. Jeff Bezos pays my mortgage. I appreciate him. <sighs> I think I'm supposed to keep the backup moon veil in hand, huh? Am I? I think I am. I think we're supposed to decline this. I appreciate it more in space. Yeah, it's probably true too. I think I can still take his money even when he's not on uh, not on planet. There is this fly in my office chat, and it is it keeps poking at my head. We have not played with Hostile Hostile yet, but we actually had a donation today for me to build a Hostile Hostile deck, so we should be getting to one soon. Gives trample, right? Do I want a pressure point and angel fire? I don't know that I do. I think I definitely want to angel fire and smash them. It gives me a nine nine. I guess if I, wait, is the pressure point lethal? So that'd be 14. So this has ward. I put them to one. It puts them to one and it forces the dessert doom off the table. That's probably worthwhile. No, I can't, I can't tap the Desert Doom because of Ward. And now they have to deal with my, well, at least one of my threats, plus be able to answer the Den of the Bugbear. And they do have Field of Rune, so like, they have mana. They have, I have another Angel Fire Ignition looming. They need, they need their Bounce Spell, which we know, we know they have from game one. Oh yeah, they have to beat the Sacred Fire too, right? They have to have a counter spell. We have them, we have them on a lot of a lot of angles here. They have seven, eight mana. They can play a land for nine. They can gold span for 11. We are at 36. Every time we angel fire ignition, we get lifelink on the creature we're, we're pumping up.
Uh, Serebii.net has uh, good Pokemon Unite resources on it. Yeah, Angel Fire is a super playable card. If you haven't watched the our our gameplay set with Red White Dragons, you'll want to watch that. It's worth it's worth worth seeing. Urkadar, thanks for the 49 months. Welcome back. Serebi looks like a website straight out of like 1990s GeoCity, but it has a lot of good information on it. I think I'm supposed to just block here. Hey, Zan, thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Uh, Regent does not kill them if it dies. Um, I don't have any other permanents in play. So you have to, you have to have a permanent in play. I'm blocking here because the odds of memory deluge hitting an unsummon are high. Yeah, lands, lands are colorless, chat. They, do they have a Dragon's Fire? They discarded one earlier, but they've seen a lot of cards here. They're through 35 cards. They put five on the bottom, so they've seen half their deck. They only have one blue mana. Oh my god, we're gonna fucking lose this game. Oh no. Oh no. Oh shit. Oh, it's all, it's all falling apart. The turn 12 Jawari disruption coming in hot. They're dead. Well, they have a card in hand and they have a field of rune on the battlefield. So I'm going to say they're not dead. Oh my God. If I would have sequenced the other way, they would have died. Holy shit. I wasn't thinking about its trigger in a removal spell. I wasn't thinking about its trigger in the removal spell. Come on, brick. Come on, Brick. Come on. God, they drew they drew Aldrin's Epiphany. They drew Aldrin's Epiphany. I'm going to loot here because Sacred Fire is lethal. Okay, I have draws that kill us. Yeah, my missed secrecy. I wasn't thinking about the last line of text on this. We'd have won this game if I'd have played those cards in the other order. I think I played this game really well up until that one missed sequence. If you had just fired up Den, you would want. I'm going to give you a 10 minute break so you can go back and review the tape to discover why Den of the Bugbear wasn't a good play. Sedge. 
I think this this matchup seems pretty bad for us. I think we need some ways in the sideboard to deal with Goldspan Dragon. I think it's the plan. No, stop it, chat. It, it, like, letting the regent die to them having multiple, like, okay, so let's say I don't put the counter on the regent and then they draw a draw two and then the draw two finds two removal spells and they kill my thing and kill the regent and then kill me. The regent, the regent surviving is a good thing. Uh, I am playing Lucario in a five stack today. Got four other Hoaglandians lined up. What's the what's the destroy target target thing? No, I'm not playing a bad card like Demon Bolt. We're gonna play uh, the give him a clue. Investigate faithful absence. Heated heated debate could be okay. I could see heated debate being fine. Maybe I want to mix. Maybe we just want four answers to gold span. Seems fine. Dude, let's try that. The blue red matchup has felt hard, but hard a little bit hard twice, and we didn't have answers to gold span. Yeah, for the rest of the current Pokemon Unite balance patch, I will not be playing five stacks without a Lucario. So either I'll be playing Lucario or someone else will be. Their, their current balance that Pokemon is, is way over tuned. Sweet, Steve. Yeah, I want to do some jungle Cinderace content at some point. Yeah, Pikachu's, Pikachu's playable, but you need to have a Lucario on the team. It was right to play the planes on one, but still feel snarls, man. It baffles you that Unite isn't on PC yet. I actually think you probably don't understand the gaming industry because putting Unite on mobile first will make them way more money than PC. The mobile gaming market, especially in a lot of um, Countries like China, and I think even Japan, tends to be a much larger than the PC market by a lot. India, the mobile market's massive too, okay. Would you like to trade? Yeah, it released on mobile Wednesday. The Switch was basically like a closed beta. Yeah, Windows 11 will run Android apps natively as well as a good shout. No, Unite has announced no plans to bring itself to PC. Opponent is now clueless.
Yo ho, tap the creature down. They don't have an answer to Ashmouth. Even untapped lands are good draws next turn, thanks to Marius call. This is an attack for 10. Yeah, top of our deck is definitely a snarl. Every every time. Uh Angel Fire is lethal, right? They get to bolt this in, and then we flash it back and do two plus this is a four. And even if it wasn't lethal, we're gaining infinite, so. Crunch. You know, when I called this card out as potentially being constructed playable in my set review, there are a lot of people that gave me shit for it. But seeing it seeing it actually play out here has been great. It's felt really very reasonable. I think in the green matchups, we trim these and we just become a little bit more interactive. Keyword, keyword soup is delicious on occasion. Yeah, it is very ingrained that sorcery speed buffs are bad. For sure. The the synergy with the uh, the egg is definitely a big part of what pushes it up over the top. The fact that it's like seven mana worth of spells in one card. Yeah, I think this is fine. We're looking to be a little bit more controlling on the draw. This has land drops and some removal spells to bridge the gap till we draw some dragons. And like once we draw like a smoldering egg, this is like a six mana card in the bin ready to go. Perfect. That's exactly what this hand wanted was a was a threat. Now we just want to draw some lands. I think I won't have a problem flipping this over. Also a good draw, so they can just prioritize killing this before they make treasures with it. Try and cut them off with the turn three chariot here. And then I think it's also important that I just end this so they can't cherry it with haste this turn.
Not the untapped land I wanted from for Christmas, but definitely better than missing. I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a slightly larger blocker. It uses my mana for the turn, and it means just a single sacred fire. I'll flip this over down the line, which is nice. Hopefully we hit lands the next two turns so we can go Moon Veil into Sacred Fire. You have a block removal spell here? It's a little sad. They could just be reading our egg too though. It has not a super popular card. Take those. Uh, it's felt pretty reasonable, Vanu. We, our original build was a little bit soft to Goldspan Dragons. So we got beat up by Blue Red Dragons a little bit, but we adjusted the sideboard to have more answers. So I'd wager that matchup's not too terrible. <clears throat> Morning, Mike. Thanks for the follow, Real John. Whoa! Untap Snarl! It's like Christmas, chat. Like Christmas. Murder this before it can uh before it can make some mana. We played green white humans yesterday, and this card is just absurdly powerful every time. Definitely a must kill, especially when they're missing land drops. So Apple's actually appealing the lawsuit that they have with Epic and they have the ability to blacklist Fortnite in their app store for as long as the lawsuit's going on, which those appeals could take up to five years. So I think, I think saying Epic or saying that, uh, Epic one is, uh, a little bit of a misnomer. Oh, Apple won and Epic is appealing. Okay, sure, I had it backwards. I knew there was an appeal going on. Thank you for the correction. I appreciate it. Huh. Okay. Everyone is claiming victory in public. Sounds like America. All right, so if I murder this, I get my thing back. I probably should have played this on white, right? I only have plenty of red, not a lot of white. I need to kill this now, because otherwise it flips tonight. And then the... The Angel Fire Ignition next turn flips the egg overall in one card. 
Well, you know what they say, Jack? The first shillion is always the hardest. I think this is, I think against the decks that play creatures of the board, Lumamancer comes out and we keep Dragons, Light Scribe, and uh, Den plus Call as our, our threats. I'll bring in Burning Hands here, plus a couple of Heated Debates. I actually can't give out channel points. It's not something I have the power to do. I don't think I want Faithful Absence here because a lot of their cards are individually bad. I'm also bringing a lot of other removal spells so we can kill their couple of things that really matter. If you flip an egg with one spell, was it over easy? That's fantastic. <clears throat> Thanks for the two years, Mageologist. Welcome back. Uh, I think I'm supposed to mulligan this. We're on the draw and we don't have any interaction on two. Red adversary. We don't have a lot of cheap spells that we're looking to flash back that don't already flash back on their own. So red adversary doesn't really seem like a worthwhile inclusion. One of the downsides to RTX voice not filtering my children's voice anymore is I need to go close my door when they're behind me. This one now. I feel like there's a good chance this dies, but I also just don't have anything else to do with my mana this turn, so let's jam. What does this attack mean? Yeah, maybe. I actually have a, a build around for Esper Magecraft in the cube bald. We're going to get to it on uh, Monday or Tuesday, I think. Oh, Seargird exiles a blocker. Yeah, good call. <clears throat> Definitely discarding my hand here. Huh. Do I discard my hand again because it's all... It's all flashback spells. <clears throat> I think I will. Oh, uh, we are playing black white control next. That'll be our last deck of the day. <laughs> We'll be swapping over to some Pokemon Unite. This card with two color flashback spells is so good.
So, I didn't play this at end of turn because the way this card is templated is if you kill it in response to its trigger, your creature never leaves play. So not only is Angel Fire good in the creature matchups like this one, but Angel Fire is also decent against the decks that are leaning on red based removal to grow your threats out of the red the red damage range. Like it's pretty reasonable against blue red dragons too. You gotta be a little bit more picky about where you sequence it when you're playing against blue red, but it's still very powerful there when you get it to resolve. I like this deck a lot. The uh <laughs> the smoldering egg. This is our um, our second time playing a red white smoldering egg deck. We didn't play Lumamancer and Light Scribe last time, and I'm I'm very confident at this point that something with these sixteen cards has to be competitive in this format. I don't I don't know that I like this smaller package better than the bigger, more controlling build that we played last time. If you look up back on the YouTube channel, there's a red white dragons deck that we had played that felt very good. Um, honestly, some revelation could probably be included in this package too, just because again, it's one card that flips over egg. But this, this core here of these two flashback cards along with these red dragons feels, feels super strong. So if you're looking for something to do with these, I think this is a great, a great core to be in. Dragon can berserker. Yeah, I could I could see that. All right. We are not done with